the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. And you are glorious, so glorious in your way. You are powerful, so powerful in your way. You are beautiful, so because we believe you. Keep praying. This is Koinonia. Shalata Bakatosia. Skadebaruto Subrendeke Parahashkala Batosia. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Are you praying inside, outside, engage in the Spirit? La baraka tosi ada baraka tosi brandi kediata. Haya haya. Your life will never be the same. My life must change. I will never be the same. My life must change. Your life must change. That's why you're here. Your life must change. 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 For some of you, your home must change. Your home must change. Your home must change. Your home must change. Your job must change. Your job must change. Your job must change. Your job must change. Hi ya, hi ya.
believe in you. Oh, we believe in you. Spirit of the living God. We believe in you. We believe in your grace. We believe in your power. This is Mount Zion. The city of our God, the dwelling place of his power. I'd like you to lift your voice in one minute and cry for a visitation tonight. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Don't look around. Forget about who is by your left and right. Cry to the God of our salvation. Give me an encounter tonight in the name of Jesus. For everyone that asked, receive it. Are you praying? Everyone that asked, receive it. Pray, you're enlarging your capacity to receive it. You will never be the same. This is a house of God. You will never be the same. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. There's a reason why I'm raising this song. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. We'll be seated shortly, but the Lord is opening my eyes. I saw chains on the feet of people. That's why I raised this song. I'm seeing the number 23. I stretch my hands. Anyone under the influence of this unction and there is a chain of darkness holding you at the count of three I want you to shout Jesus inside and outside. I want you to bring them here in the name that is above all names This is Mount Zion and the Bible declares that upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance Are you ready to shout one two three shout Jesus? I break chains I break chains, bring them out. I break chains. Every chain that will not let you move forward. Every chain that holds you down. It must leave you now. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God. Bring them out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please just lay your right hand on your head. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Please be silent. No instrument, no nothing. Just lay your right hand on your head. I'm just seeing fire move from person to person. Just bring those under the anointing outside. There is a massive deliverance. I'm seeing horns. And the Lord is telling me that these are ancient altars that are sitting on families that will not let them go free. Some of you has been so for long. But except God did not send us, I tell you those altars will not last to this service. Just keep your hands on your head. Father, in the name of Jesus, anyone under the sound of my voice, in here the overflows outside following online if there is any handwriting and any altar partake barata bring them outside on anyone's destiny on anyone's life 
Those altars catch fire right now. Keep your hands on your head. Release that family, all of them. Release that family. Not just one person. Release that family. This is a whole family under bondage. Release them. Release them. Release them now. Release them now. Father, mother, siblings. Release them. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing a family. No one gives birth. Fruitfulness is a challenge. The Lord is releasing that family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is koinonia. Every manifestation of witchcraft exchanging the glory of anyone here so that where you should be another is taking your place. I command that spirit to give way right now in the name of Jesus. I command that spirit to give way in the name of Jesus. This change that I see on people's feet it's time to release them right now you've been at the same position for many years the only thing growing in your life is your age nothing more is growing in the name of jesus i take authority over it i take authority over it hallelujah who is bethel i'm hearing a name bethel Bethel will be seated shortly but this is the house of God Bethel in the name of Jesus Christ Madam I don't know who this woman is yes that one with her hand on her head Madam look at me I'm seeing oil being poured on your head and the Lord is saying a major breakthrough is coming to your family. That things will never be the same. You don't have to bring her out. What's your name? Is she the Bethel? What's, you are Bethel, madam. Let me pray for you. There is a Bethel that the Lord is asking me to rebuke death from your family. Because I am seen obituary by the month of May. And the Lord is saying we must rebuke that spirit. Hear me. Anyone that digs a pit for you here. I declare the earth will open and swallow them. The Bible says and the Lord of peace shall give you peace always and by all means in the name of Jesus I pray for you all of the Bethels who are here I stretch my hands and I declare that the plague of death is over from your life and your family we minister life by the spirit of grace in the name of Jesus Christ and for all of you who are out here by the spirit I open up every closed door right now and in the name of Jesus, we release you to prophetic dimensions. Move to the next levels of your life, next levels of your destinies. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a family here you don't have to come out it's like your son or your brother has been missing for a long time i'm seeing that in two weeks that person is returning back home this is not someone that 
you, you, you thought that they kidnapped the person. They did not kidnap the person. It's just a stubborn child that ran away, like the prodigal son. The power of God is touching that person because I'm seeing that boy now in a dose state. And God, some boys are going to teach him maybe fraud or something like that. This is what I'm seeing that gentleman doing. But the power of God is touching him and in the name of Jesus, he's returning back home. Hallelujah. One more time, whatever will not let you go, I call on my God, who is also your God. May He clear them out of your way. May He clear them out of your way. May He clear them out of your way. Every obstacle that will not let you advance, I call on my God to clear them out of your way. God bless you and good evening. Please be seated. God bless you. Please take these ones to their seat. God bless you. Thank you, guys. Genesis chapter 28. I felt stirred in my spirit. We're on a prayer series. But I felt very stirred in my spirit to just prophetically speak a blessing in our lives before we begin a discourse. Genesis 28, we'll start from verse 10. The blessing is in verse 13 to 15. Please pay attention. The Bible says, And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night. The Bible says, Because the sun was set, he took stones from that place and put them for pillows, and he lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set on the earth, and the top of it reached the heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. Are you ready for the blessing? And behold, verse 13 says, The Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereupon thou liest, to you I will give unto you and your seed. Yeah. Verse 14. It says your seed shall be as the dust of the earth. Yeah. And thou shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. It says and in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Yeah. Verse 15. And behold I am with thee. And I will keep thee in all places whither thou goest. And I will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken unto you. The word of God, please sit down. The word of God is very powerful. The reason is because God invested his power in his word. The word of God is beyond just the letter of scripture. You have to understand that. The word of God is not just a manual produced by Zondervan or White Taker House or any other publishing company. It's more than that. The word of God represents the spirit and the life of God. He says the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life that means if it is the word of god that is communicated to you you should receive more than education you should receive more than enlightenment because the word of god is not empty habakkuk chapter 3 from verse 3 and 4 the bible says dear in the light that comes from his word is the hiding place of his power so when the word of god comes it does not just come to enlighten alone I think it's important that I start by just charging our hearts to really understand the ministry of the word. The word of God has several assignments in the life of the believer. Number one, the Bible says the word of God is able to build up. That means it is responsible for providing maturity. Maturity through enlightenment. When I was a child, 1 Corinthians 13, I taught like a child. I spoke like a child. I understood as a child. But now that I am a man, 
so in this kingdom we grow on the strength of the light of God's word the word of God provides growth through enlightenment the word of God takes away ignorance from the life of the believer Ephesians 4 18 having their understanding darkened the Bible says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them why because of the blindness this is the assignment of the God of this world to blind the minds of people so that people continue to walk around shadow boxing in complete ignorance number three the word of god is the conveyor of his intent to men you have to understand this god's thoughts are captured in his word the word logos it represents the thoughts of a man it says for i know the thoughts that i think towards you jeremiah 29 and verse 11 it says they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you uh, what they, they, are, they, are, they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you an expected end when you find the word of God you are able to find the thoughts of God do you know what that means the thinking pattern it does not just tell you the principles of the kingdom it cultures your thought process it says let this mind be in you Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 permit this mind to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus there was an ideology there was a mindset that made the Holy Ghost comfortable on Jesus that made him finish his ministry in three and a half years and the Bible says to allow that same mindset that thinking that belief system to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus the Word of God cultures are thinking because you are truly not transformed if your mind and your thinking if the only thing you receive is information is not enough for transformation your mind your mindset your viewpoint your plane of judgment must be altered by God's Word the word exousia where we get authority from it's not just the power of delegation alone it is the capacity to stand in the office of a man by reason of enlightenment dominion and authority in this kingdom is light dependent it's not just an impartation please understand this it is not just because you found in scripture that the bible says you have authority over principalities and powers it automatically means just because you have found it it becomes true in your life it will take enlightenment illumination through the word i commend you to god paul said and to the word of his grace which is able to make you wise this is another thing that the word of god does it gives us wisdom god's perspective on all matters is able to make you wise unto salvation the bible says so every time you submit yourself to the atmosphere of God's word, it's important that you have very definite expectations. At the instance of God's word, I expect my ignorance to diminish. If it does not happen, it was not the word of God I encountered. At the instance of God's word, I should, there should be transformation and excelling in light through knowledge. Paul said, I went up by revelation and listen it is on the strength of this that God imparts grace upon people Ephesians chapter 3 Paul was speaking he was mentoring the church in Ephesus and he began to tell them the basis the basis for his authority and his exegesis of scripture when he gets to verse 9 Ephesians chapter 3 please give us verse 9 he said there was a grace that can make all men see this is a grace the grace that makes all men see regardless of your educational qualification or limitation there is a grace that can veto the limitations of men and still bring comprehension of truth why because the bible is more than a lecture manual the matters of the spirit are not just educational affairs when it has to do with the things of the spirit both the enlightened and unenlightened would have to depend on the holy spirit 
just because you have enough education to open your bible does not mean it is opened the book must be opened but the seals must be unlocked are we together it is very powerful let me tell you this i hope that we'll cover it in one of the series a territory any territory is at the mercy of the quality of spiritual information that is supplied that territory please listen carefully you cannot transform a territory just by having a church no you will transform a territory to the degree to which you supply superior spiritual information when people embrace this information it may be slow but with time you find out that their mindset and their thinking now comes under the influence of that spiritual information they will now take it to their places of work they will now begin to institutionalize that mindset and then the territory begins to respond to that body of knowledge when the devil wants to destroy a territory is very easy he focuses on the major models the men and the women who are the communicators the shapers of the spiritual convictions of that territory he will either derail them to be in error or completely bring them out of relevance if he does that all kinds of activities can continue but i assure you there will not be growth the real destiny of a territory it's not just in the hands of members of parliament as important as it is there are so many honorable members senators here i respect you would, would appreciate you later in the course of the service people from the presidency i appreciate you but it takes more than politics to change a territory there are business people here veterans in business bankers investors etc some of you are here some of you are following online in as much as you provide the kind of value that makes for the civilization of a territory it will take more than that to transform a territory the shapers of the spiritual convictions of men this is not about religion listen to me you ignore the shapers of the spiritual convictions of a territory you will pay for it africa is a very religious continent on average the average believer in this continent submits himself an average of every day if he's a serious christian to someone who is shaping his spiritual conviction and it matters what information we are receiving one wrong ideology can cause a territory to pay the price for over a decade that is the reason why God will judge our spiritual leaders judge the content of the truth that we use to mentor territories with is why the training of a man of God if he's a genuine man of God is a training that only God can grant grace on the strictness of the training is because of the seriousness of the assignment it's more than just a church service destinies are connected to the information you are supplying and if you love God and love the territory you are sent to you must pay the price in the spirit through the sacrifice of alignment and then study the absence of laziness to bring information that is both spiritual in context and relevant enough to transform society the christianity that cannot translate into principles that change society is not profitable every revival you study church history you will see that the spiritual convictions of the people found a way to improve the standard of living of people in a territory that way even an unbeliever will no longer see god as a nuisance there is the gospel as a message that saves but there is the gospel as an ideology that transforms the message that saves is a personal thing the ideology that transforms is a territorial reality is a body of information please understand that week in week out every time you come here i continue to emphasize it this is not just a man trying to excel in ministry this is god seeking to come through a territory a nation a continent as much as can 
we can allow him find expression to shape and change people words are powerful territories were defeated through words when you study through history not just church history dictators and leaders use the power of ideologies to turn people from from very very well-meaning convictions to destructive convictions territories were shaped through the power of words what you are hearing now is not just a sermon you are submitting your destiny to a body of knowledge god will judge me if i lie to you and i deceive you because on the strength of the information you are receiving you will take decisions and there are destinies connected to the decisions you are taking an average person here is either a father or a leader i'm showing you the seriousness of ministry please my dear co-laborers let us pay the price and be serious with what we do every week it's more than just bringing a message you are contributing to shaping the convictions of a territory you can measure the spiritual health of a territory by calling the believers at random and having an interview what about the kingdom do you know and what about the kingdom do you not know the assessment from an average believer tells the quality of the spiritual voices in that territory if only men of God can answer intelligently as far as in spiritual intelligence is concerned then there is a problem with us men of God the average believer should be so built and so sound that whether in office, in politics, in parliament, I'm not talking about fanatism. I'm talking about spiritual intelligence that translates into a marketable dimension of God that makes even an unbeliever to want you. Please understand what we are advocating here. There is blind fanatism that produces no results. They worship someone in the epistles. It was written to the unknown God. There are many people still doing it today. Zeal to a God that they do not know. God is not just the God of Christians. God is the God of all flesh. There must be a dimension in our spiritual communication where Muslims and unbelievers can still find relevance in what we are doing. It doesn't have to be only Christians that listen to us. If the only person who benefits from my message is a Christian, I'm not truly sent. The kingdom must be communicated in a way and a manner. We are, we are communicating ideologies here that shape lives and destinies. This is ministry. It is more than preaching. It is more than just influence. This is why we pray. This is why we fast. This is why we study. This is why we labor in the spirit to bring timeless truth by the spirit of God. This is why we need the Holy Spirit so much and you hear us cry our dependence on him. Because the kind of burden that comes upon a minister, there is no level of education that can supply, can fill that vacuum. It will take the size of God. Are we blessed so even if it's just 30 minutes we have tonight please hear me please hear me please hear me those who are outside those who are here all of the overflows take your mind away from any mundane distraction you are in the house of God your destiny is about to change so you listen praise the name of the Lord listen to be transformed don't just listen for enlightenment alone. Hallelujah, praise God. What did you learn? I just know God moved. You, that, that's not, that, it will not profit you that way. It is not one word from the Lord. I've said it again. It is not one word from the Lord that changes people. You hear people say only one word from God. I understand what they are trying to say. But in truth, it is not one word from God that changes you. One word that is communicated with intelligence explained properly received by the believer and applied accordingly that is the word that transforms your company is dependent on this spiritual information your political career depends on this information 
away with that thought that makes it look like coming to church and listening to God is just a filling up of space it's a waste of time it's a nuisance to civilization I may not know what your experience has been hitherto but let me tell you something you are in a place where every second and every minute you invest your destiny here I want you to know that it has profitability all wise it gives you intelligence that can bring you wealth it brings you intelligence that will save you years of shadow boxing I will search for you and I will find you and I will find you with all my heart that I will search for you and I will find you I will find you with all my heart I will lift my voice to you in worship and I will worship with all my heart only seekers find I will search for you and I will find you yes I will find you with all my heart I will lift my voice to you in worship and I will worship just lift your voice in one minute and pray to God grant me knowledge grant me knowledge oh God even tonight oh let me rise to a higher pedestal it is within your power Pray. Some of you are in ministry. Some of you are in business. Bring me truth that can, trans can transform my life. Politics. Bring me truth that will empower me to be a blessing. Transgenerationally. Not just within the tenure of my political career. Are you praying? This is part of the service. Please pray you're not wasting your time. Every moment in his presence. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever love you. Keep praying. Oh God, you are my God. I will ever trust you Oh God, you are my God And I will ever follow you I will seek you in the morning I have learned to walk in your way I like this part. Step by step, you lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Oh God, you are my light, and I will never break Step by step. Step by step. You lead me. I may not look like it now, but I'm under the influence of you. Step by step. Step by step. You lead me. And I will follow you. Listen. Hear me. There is a way God makes men. 
follow me and I will make you. Your assignment is to trust me enough. Come under the influence of my leadership, he says. My assignment is to make you. It is not only the heavens and the earth he makes. He can make men. Oh, let no man despise you, my dear brother and my sister. You are in the presence of the one who can make men. Everybody you see that you admire was made. He can make men. It says, my help cometh from the Lord, the maker. It's not only the heavens and the earth he makes. He can make men. Follow me, he said. I will make you. Oh man of God, follow me. I know you don't look like it. You don't even look like the call of God is upon your life. It doesn't look like that prophetic grace is on you. But follow me, he says, and I will make you. Notice he never said, follow me and I will send you. Uh -uh. When you follow him, he makes first. Out of the abundance of the making, he sends you. And he said, when I send you, lackest thou anything? Now, many proud believers do not submit to the making process. We are obsessed with being sent. And you see, let me tell you this. In the school of the spirit, any lecture you meet, any lecture you miss, you will pay for it in the future. In the physical, you can miss many lectures, say as a student, and then read up quickly and write an exam and pass. But the school of the spirit, the lectures are strict. You miss a lecture on character, you can get anointing, you will pay the price for that lecture you missed in the future. You, you attend the lecture on character and miss the lecture on empowerment. When you stand before principalities and powers, they will ask you who sent you. You miss the lecture on influence, you may have a good message but nobody will listen to you. For a while you arrogantly say it does not matter till you find out you are alone. And the Bible says it is not good for man to be alone. It's not just talking of a wife. He's saying being alone is a risk in this life. It is not good for man to be alone. Show me the company that lifts your hands. Show me the promoters of your ideology. Politicians, hear me. It is not good for a man to be alone. You must raise men who become advocates of your ideology. Your safety is in the men that defend your convictions. It is not good. Let's get to the word. I don't know what brought me here. Will you believe that we've not gotten to our series? Did we greet? Good evening. Welcome to church. This is Koinonia. Help us, oh God. We have come to learn in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, we began to consider a series on prayer, prevailing prayer, the mysteries of the kingdom. Now, I forgot to say last week that if that was part one, please, you may want to document that. And let me advise, respectfully speaking, when you come to church, whether it's an electronic device or it is something the church of god is a place of learning so when you come whether it is through your device or it's through a material to write there is always something for you to write down praise the name of the lord parents please advise your children don't go to church hanging virus and sacking jeans and move. get a notebook as if you're a serious child intending to build a destiny let's love our children but not pamper them to destruction they survive by instructions provided they are under your roof they must listen to your counsel hallelujah a generation that hates knowledge is a generation that will be slaves i repeat a generation that hates knowledge has sold themselves already into slavery praise the name of the lord the body of spiritual truth that is allocated for the victory of the saints the bible generically calls them mysteries matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus teaching he said it has been given unto us 
to know the mysteries a mystery is a hidden code of operation it's a body of spiritual truth that is privy to a group of people are we together now yes they are called mysteries because largely speaking those who have not encountered the lord jesus christ may not understand them because of the character and the operation the way they work for instance if you are not born again when you hear truths like there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty that does not make sense because in the economic system of the world it is by accumulation that you build but the kingdom does not exactly work that way are we together for instance in the kingdom our words have prophetic implications that they are shapers of our reality let the redeemed of the lord the bible said say so not wish so so we don't just wish things in this kingdom that we our speaking is part of the creative system of our destiny but for an unbeliever when you say say so it doesn't make sense but in this kingdom we speak because even our god is a talking spirit he speaks so they are called mysteries when we build believers and open up these mysteries by the spirit then we bring believers into this exact body of truth the bible calls it marvelous light on account of that truth that you now have that you now hold you can walk in dominion dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom and can i tell you the mysteries of the kingdom are not infinite it's a finite body of knowledge you can hold and one of them is the mysteries of prayer prayer is powerful believers pray but largely we shadow box we just dissipate a lot of spiritual energy based on how we saw those who led us pray so we just follow and pray there is so much dissipation of spiritual energy but then there's very little result for a long time i thought that you learned how to pray just by praying until i found out that jesus did not just tell the disciples pray 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 he taught them to pray are we together so we began to consider part one please you can do well go online get the first part so that you follow um we're going to examine for this night very briefly matthew chapter 6 this is jesus this is one of his mentorship sessions i love jesus did you know that all through the three and a half years of jesus we never really hear him talking about anointing and empowerment look at how he made mighty men he focused on teaching them it took just one encounter to bring the holy ghost and power but it took three years to change their thinking empowerment is not so difficult the problem is when the oil comes on a small container the container will make the oil look small so before the arrival of the oil go and borrow vessels borrow not a few expand your capacity so that when the oil comes it will meet a container that is large enough and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped flowing matthew chapter 6 please love your bible and let's be students of scripture in the name of jesus spiritual laziness is out of our lives we must obtain grace let us place value on the word of god not for the purpose of getting a sermon to preach this is for our growth and for enlightenment are we together all right so jesus when you read the account of luke you will discover that when jesus was done praying we discussed it last week um luke's account is one of the synoptics and he the disciple said teach us to pray they noticed that there was something about the way jesus prayed versus the result that came the disciples were not talking about backsliding the issue was not prayerlessness the issue was inaccuracy in prayer there was something about their prayer that did not produce results but they noticed that the prayer of the son of the living god the messiah their mentor produced tremendous results like james told us he said the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous 
it says that it makes uh how, how does he put it now i've failed much so jesus is teaching and how many of you know that when jesus is teaching you pay attention matthew chapter 6 please give it to us theologically speaking we call it the lord's prayer i don't know if it, this really is the lord's prayer this is this is just the lord's lecture on prayer the real lord's prayer is in verse chapter 17 john 17 that's when jesus prayed he lifted his eyes to heaven and prayed but you if you are in the seminary here you don't write what i told you for your exams you will you will fail for no reason praise the name of the lord okay so matthew chapter 6 please now jesus is saying look up after this manner pray ye. wow he did not say repeat what i'm about to say after this manner means i am building a spiritual pattern to prayer that i want you to follow he's showing us the protocol of prayer that works the prayer that prevails are we together now until this time he said a lot of things that i don't want to go into when jesus began to discuss the issue of prayer go to verse let's start from verse 5 jesus is teaching on prayer and his first point of call is hypocrisy amazing <laughs> jesus is teaching when thou prayest thou shalt not be as the hypocrites what in the world is the relationship between prayer and hypocrisy he's teaching who are the hypocrites they love to pray standing in the synagogues the bible says and in the corners of the street that they may be seen of men so the hypocrisy is the motivation behind that energy that is dissipated that even though it looks like there is a lot of prayer but the goal is that men will see that when you approach prayer he's teaching here resist the temptation of trying to sign a spiritual register in the presence of people there are many people today whose prayer life is already down but based on your assessment you will think it's up there because every time they see you they have not they have not resisted this temptation this is africa and there is a lot of treasure that we place on people who pray which is wonderful but i'm telling you that many people intrinsically they do not have the passion nor the revelation of prayer but when we are before people the temptation is to dissipate spiritual energy provided there's somebody looking at you because of the assessment they will take back about you and jesus is teaching on prayer he's saying resist that temptation prayer is more than a desire to let men see that you're spiritual that they may be seen of men verily i say unto you they have their reward what is their reward the perception that you have mog so you pray that's their reward oh what a poor reward for such a sacrifice are you learning now jesus is teaching us prayer now he's not saying people should not see you but he's saying primarily your motive should never be to try to use spirituality to attract some sort of respect There are people who claim to pray and they are sleeping the moment they hear a knock on the door and you open they now act like they are praying you go back and say you mean three hours you've been here they have their reward their reward is the perception that you live with but there is no energy being dissipated in the spirit when the school of prayer hmm. next verse please help us this is a study it says but when thou prayest enter into your closet and when you have shut the door pray to your father now look at this he is not saying just the idea is not pray alone you have to understand what jesus is saying here the idea is not refusing you from praying in public uh -uh. he's saying that the construct of your mindset when you pray should be that your focus should be on god enter into your closet are we together now 
it's not just a literal statement to mean every time you want to pray roll into your closet no he's saying whether you are in the midst of people or you are alone the moment is time for prayer let nothing around you distract you let your focus be on god please keep that scripture there he says pray to your father which is in secret and your father which see it in secret shall reward you openly verse 7 when you pray next warning so we are addressing hypocrisy and we are addressing focusing on men now he's talking about vain repetitions now let me correct this because i know that there are people following from all over the world vain repetition here as the heathen do i love jesus there are repetitions that are very proper but there are repetitions called vain repetitions for you to understand this you have to understand the ancient religions they had chants that they used some of them were occultic are we together now and there are some religions in the world that still practice it they can chant a word or a phrase sometimes five thousand times you understand what i'm saying this is what jesus is saying that when we approach the father to pray we should not use vain repetitions as the hidden do for they think they shall be heard for their mouth speaking he's not saying you should not talk he's not saying you should not repeat prayer points a lot of people have misunderstood this scripture and every time they ask god for something they feel guilty for asking again the bible says jesus prayed three times using the same words the same words verse 8 be not therefore like them, for your heavenly Father knoweth the things that ye have need of. Now, this is a very powerful information, but it's also very fearful. God, why should I then pray, since you know the things that I need? Jesus is speaking, and he said, nothing about your request is a shock to the Father. He's omniscient, all-knowing. But why... Do you have to pray there are many reasons maybe the last session will deal with that but one of the reasons why we have to pray is because God gave man a will there are seven things God gave man not a spiritual man man as the zenith of his creation that stands us out from all other creations one of it is the will the day God gave man a will it became scripturally incorrect for God to veto on man's will and make assumptions without the man making petition and demand. Are we together? Even at the expense of your eternal destiny, God does not impart eternal life by force on you. As merciful and as loving as he is, if you do not verbalize and make a declaration of your need for Jesus, he will respect your will until you go to hell. That's how powerful God's honor for the will of man is. So believing that God will arbitrarily just come into your life and over your situation without beckoning on him may leave you in shock and leave you in disappointment. There are people going to hell today and in spite of the reality of the finished work of Christ, the substitutionary sacrifice, he still respects their will. He met blind Bartimeo on the way to Jericho. And he says, what should I do for you? What do you think a blind man will want? Don't say the opening of eyes. What if he wanted money? In the book of Acts, remember the guy who was crippled? He did not want to be healed. He was asking for arms. Not everyone in trouble wants to come out. Oh, I have learned this in ministry. Not everyone down wants to go up. You have to honor and respect the will of people. If they want to remain where they are, you leave them honorably there. Trying to feed a man who is not hungry may put you in trouble. So God allows you to verbalize your desire, your desperation, and he responds to it. Now, let's discuss prayer. 6 verse 9. He says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Koinonia, listen. Let's discuss prayer now. Pattern number one. Our Father. Everybody please say it. Our Father. He's teaching us to pray. That every time you are about to pray, 
the first consciousness in your heart should be the fatherhood of God you are not praying to an archangel you are not praying to some deity somewhere even though God is the God of the universe he's the ancient of days El Gibor etc but when you approach God in prayer the name should be Abba father you know what father means source from the word Abba it means my source it means my sustainer it means my defender carry this mindset when you pray that the person you are praying to even though he is the God of the universe he is my father God of wonders beyond our galaxy you are holy holy God of wonders beyond our galaxy that God that created the heavens and the earth is my father Romans chapter 8 and verse 15 please the consciousness of the fatherhood of God media let's work together Romans 8 15 the Bible says for we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we who are in Christ we now have a right to call him Abba father my source I'm not coming to someone who I'm hoping wants to bless me I'm coming to someone who is obsessed about defending my interest I came from him he's saying this mindset must govern your approach to prayer if you come as though you are meeting a stranger you are submitting a CV before someone whose intent you don't know it is important you know that God is interested in you Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11 please let's hurry up Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11 now look up please Jesus is contrasting earthly fatherhood he's speaking about fatherhood now if ye then being evil fathers now know how to give good gifts my goodness my God look at this you know what Jesus is saying he's saying men even though you people are sinners the sin nature is actively at work in you yet as powerful as the sin nature is it could not kill away the compassion of a father as as evil as you are terrorists still take care of their children is that true as evil as they are their children still return home daddy how are you an armed brother just returned from killing another person yet he can kiss his child that's how powerful fatherhood is when you say Abba Father, you understand this. A terrorist can kill any other person, but he will not kill his children. As cruel as he is, he still has compassion enough to know. So the Bible says when you approach God, realize like a child, you are coming to a responsible father. And here the Bible gives us the classic sign of fatherhood fatherhood is not the ability to give birth to children the real proof of fatherhood is your ease to give your ease to release that you are not just a father because you have biological children in god's mind if you are truly a father he measures your fatherhood by your ability to give so when i say my father i'm coming to the one who has made me a receiver because he's a giver this should be your construct we are discussing prayer here prayer that prevails Abba Father I'm coming to him and I'm coming with certainty God is a giver he will not withhold any good thing from me I'm not hoping and wondering I'm not thinking of which angel will help me lobby him no Father keep that scripture there please it says if ye then be evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that want it look at your bible to them that fathers don't just give good things to those who want this father 
gives good things to them that ask. He loves you enough to respect your will. If you don't ask, he assumes you are aware but not interested. Ye have not because ye ask not. Look at me. Do you know how many things we would have cheaply received in our lives only if we had the grace to ask? Many years ago, a gentleman, I noticed he was always uneasy around me. I think he wanted to ask for something. I don't know if it was a shoe or some money. And truthfully speaking, one day I told him, I said, why are you always like this? He used to help me just clean the house around. And then he stood, stood wondering. And eventually he told me something he wanted to do. And he needed some money. And it was not just much. When he told me that thing, I felt sad. Do you know why I felt sad? I felt that I have been too nice to this boy. I had taken him as a son too much for him to be in such fear to ask me. In his presence, I had given to strangers. In his presence, I had done. That's how God feels insulted when you leave him and go to a herbalist and he's watching you. He's saying, is, what, who taught you about my fatherhood? Whoever taught you that if you come to me, I cannot help you? Who mentored you? To not know that I am a giver. You see the reason why serving other gods touch him? Because he believes that he has, he has brought rain on both the godly and ungodly. He has done too many things for those outside the kingdom. Enough to convince you. Every responsible father here. If your child sees you giving 100,000 to your security. Will you give him 100,000? He knows he's worth more than that to you. He can have an idea of what he will receive from what he sees you giving outsiders. So to know how much God can give me, I look at unbelievers and say, what did he give them? He gave them mercy. He gave them rain. Now we are talking of a family affair. So I come to him, Abba. Someone shout Abba. When you come to him, know that he's your source. He wants to know that he's not plan A. When you call him Abba, you verbalize your total dependence on him. Lord, I'm not coming to you as plan A that I'm trying. There is one horn or one, one, one javelin that was given to me by one, um, one native doctor to hang and watch. In case you fail me, I quickly use it to save myself from embarrassment. Let me tell you this. Do you know why God seems to show up for people at their last point? That's when they've given up on all the options. There is an attribute of God that is, unless it is taught, it looks like a very negative attribute. It's called his jealousy. Have you read that God is a jealous God? Now, jealousy is not a negative attribute. In fact, it is jealousy. Do you know that the foundation for responsibility is jealousy? You cannot be responsible over something you are not jealous about. Parents, you have a child now. The moment you hear the cry of your child, it is your jealousy that provokes you to want to say, what is that? So when the Bible says God is a jealous God, there is something in you that is connected to him. When he hears your cry, he can't pretend that it is not you. He knows the sound. Abba, my father, when you approach God in prayer, let him be your source, your everything, not plan B. Not to drop a Bible, you drop a charm, a talisman and say I'm praying to a universal deity I don't insult your convictions there are people following from all over the world in as much as I respect your spiritual orientation this is a platform that advocates Jesus so let me have the confidence to do it unashamedly you will not listen listen to me you cannot 
meet Jesus and a charm, Jesus and something in your pocket, Jesus, no. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. Do you believe what I'm saying? So let me advise you. I know that this is Africa and I don't mean to insult your pedigree. I think believers, we have to get to a point where we must be willing to take God seriously by folding other gods that we have. A God that you carry, is that powerful enough? Many people have gone into traditional worship simply because the advocacy of prayer that had been proposed hitherto failed them. So don't be hard on anybody you know who is practicing Christianity and tradition. We are not here condemning. We are helping people to see that it's not necessary when you know God as Abba. Hallelujah. I look around and I see a few little children, our young ones just scattered in the congregation. And I can almost discern the extent of confidence you see those little kids. You'd come as an usher or as a protocol to bully them. They came to church with the consciousness that they are under the defense of their father. They don't care who you are, what department, that is your business and those organizing it. As far as they are concerned, my confidence the only trouble in their life is when their fathers or their parents get up and want to walk away that should be your true fear if your father is not there it is worth being afraid of that's why jesus rebuked them he said why the fear you are looking at the storm am i not in the boat if the boat will capsize, will it throw you and leave only me? If they kept quiet, we would have read something else today. We would have read a boat that was elevating in the midst of the storm. They stopped us from seeing another dimension of God. They downgraded His power through their unbelief. Let's hurry up. Abba, Father. Number two. The second revelation about prayer. Please keep that scripture, Matthew chapter 6, we're still discussing verse 9. Matthew 6 verse 9, please. Media help us, verse 9. Abba, Father, second revelation, which art in heaven. Look up, please. This means that every time you approach God, your faith must be alive. Are we together now? Because he is in a domain and a realm. That is higher than this three-dimensional sphere so you will need faith which art in heaven even though he's everywhere but heaven is his throne the earth is his footstool that means it will require faith the one you are communicating with is so real yet he's not visible to the optical eyes it will require faith to strengthen your conviction that even though you are talking he's listening to you what a god his feet, his legs are in the earth. The Bible says the earth is his footstool. And yet you talk whether in a whisper or in a shout, he still hears. Which art in heaven? Hebrews chapter 11, when you read verse 6. Hebrews 11. It says, but without faith it is impossible possible to please God look up believers why for he that cometh to God must come with this conviction that he is that means he exists don't come hoping is he really alive Jesus is alive forever he's alive amen remember that song he's alive he's alive Jesus is alive 
Many of you have friends you have never seen, yet you are so close to them, you can feel the impulses of their emotions. Why are you feeling bad today? And he tells you, I have a bad day, yet you've never seen him. They that worship him was worship him in spirit and in truth. Please, someone say he's alive. That means when you approach God in prayer, remember which art in heaven. He is in heaven, yet he is with you. So we say he is here. An unbeliever looks at this and says, How stupid a statement. He is here? Where? Where is his chair? That's the carnal man. It's a mystery. How could he be seated on the throne, seated in my heart, and still in the room? What sort of a God is that? Anywhere there is a throne, he sits there. There is a throne in heaven, he sits there. There is a throne in my heart, he sits there. When we build him a throne in this place, he sits. If your home builds him a throne, he sits. Anywhere he finds a throne, that means he's crown king. He will come to honor you. Could that be why he's not found in your home? You have built yourself thrones, but you have not built him a throne. He shall reign. He shall reign. He shall reign forevermore. Crown him King of Kings. Crown him Lord of Lords. Listen. Which art in heaven means you will require faith all the time. Without faith, there are things you cannot believe. Without faith, you cannot receive. Remember the scripture I taught you, Mark 11 verse 24. What things soever ye desire, it says, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest it, and thou shalt have them. You can never have what you have not received. Receiving is a spiritual thing. I received that miracle. I received that job. And you are laughing as if you have it genuinely. And unbelievers look at you. They keep mocking till they start celebrating. Next instruction to help us with prayer. Hallowed, let's hurry up. It says, Hallowed be your name. Verse 9. Please keep verse 9. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and then 30. Hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name means in spite of his fatherhood, you must approach him with the spirit of reverence. Please look up. The revelation of the fatherhood of God can so affect us. It can get to a point in our lives where we trivialize him like many people have. So he reminds you that even though you approach him with confidence, you must approach him from a standpoint of reverence. It's called Yirat Adonai, the fear of the Lord. It's not enough to believe in God. You must revere him. Please give us that scripture, Samuel. He said, wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that my house and the house of my father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, be it far from me, for them that honor me, look up believers, I will honor, and they that despise me, I will lightly esteem. That means not take them seriously. You must approach God with honor. This is where the balance, and, and I say this with every sense of respect, Pentecostals and Charismatics have made a big mistake and a mess of the revelation of things like the grace of God and the fatherhood of God. Because in a bid to instill confidence in people to approach God, sometimes if we are not careful, we erode away the healthy reverence to have for God. And God has a way of bringing you back to order. When you dishonor him too much, he has a way of doing something spectacular in your life. 
that will reduce you back to say, God, I fear you. He says, now that you are back, let's continue the way it used to be. Have you seen fathers remind their children and say, hey, hey, it's all right. You are jumping on me, but remember, this man you are jumping on is also CEO. He's not just your father. I've allowed you to climb my neck is enough. You can climb my neck and play. You can climb my neck and do whatever. But by the time you bring spoon and say, let's eat together, and it becomes a habit, then the father says, no, this is daddy's cup. This is daddy's spoon. The child leaves feeling bad, but the father is happy because that is a balance. Otherwise, it will graduate to dishonor. One day, you will do what the mother is doing. The mother is playing with her husband, and the child will come and slap the father too. So he reminds you he did not marry you. See the balance. This is God. There is a weakness in men. Every time great men are too available, the temptation for dishonor is around the corner. So there is always a way. It's a weakness in men. It's the reason why even sociologically speaking, most great men sometimes intentionally just create that difficulty to approach them as a way of reminding you that they did not get there by this. When they give you access and they study your sense of honor or dishonor, when they find out that the closer you are coming to them, the more your dishonor is dropping, they peg you there and you don't move forward from there. Maybe this is a lesson for someone to learn. That may be why a door that was once opened closed against you. Because great people gave you unusual access and the revelation of their fatherhood was there, but you missed the reverence part. It's a combination of lion and lamb. God is not only lamb, he is lion. You don't play with a lion, you can play with a lamb. Because you see, a lamb that later becomes a sheep does not have horns. It can't hurt you. It will only depend on the safety of the shepherd. But a lion will tear you into pieces. God is both. He is both depending on who you are. Let me tell you this, there are sights of God that are very fearful. Never miss the reverence part. There are times that I return maybe from a crusade or from a meeting and I see the wonder working power of God. And sometimes I go down on my knees and I say, God Almighty, I not only believe you, I fear you. Maybe God is speaking to someone who has been trivializing God. You walk to him casually. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I didn't ask you to die for me. You died for me. Now listen carefully. Here are my prayer requests. We call it confidence. Number one, I'm tired of this pay scale. Raise me up. Two, I am this. And we blackmail him. And then we wrap everything up. Uh, I expect between now and the next two weeks. You are really God. Please listen. I'm not being sarcastic. Never allow your reverence for God to erode. No matter how close you get to God or greatness, do not ever forget that greatness still remains greatness. Please, this is a word of caution. Leaders, maybe this is why many great people do not invite you to their tables again. They have seen that you do not know how to manage the system of greatness. No matter how God, even if God comes to jump around, you know, once in a while you see him warning his disciples because they got too used to him. And say, hey, before your father Abraham, I am for that information. Don't you think you are just two years older than me, Peter? Ah. I know they killed all my age mates from two years and below. Don't you ever think we're age mates before your father Abraham was. I am. When he resurrected in John 21, he said, little children, have you any catch? They were used to him by now. None of them said, ah, God, you are, he's the ancient of days. That means you should never be ashamed of going down your knees. You should never be ashamed of rolling before him he deserves it it is not you are not you're not 
you're not ignoring the fact that you're his righteousness you're not even ignoring your oneness you are balancing the revelation of his fatherhood you are letting him know that no matter how free you are with me oh god you are still the god of the universe there are young people here let me give you a counsel this may be the reason why many great people in your life don't pay attention to you again they gave you access that not even their senior executives have and you trivialize it oh i can call that man's number let me put it on loudspeaker you see the man loves me so much when they discern that you do not know how to protect and preserve access they will withdraw it are we learning something this night hallowed be your name boldness according to hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16 should not be mistaken for pride and dishonor hebrews 4 and verse 16 says to come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need boldness is coming knowing that every sin and everything that can stand as a blockade has been gone why through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus his son now he has become a new one a living way he's given me access to the father now i come without a sense like Kenyon would define righteousness as the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt inferiority nor condemnation yet in the midst of it that reverence will still be there even in heaven they still bow yes sir even in the throne room they still bow you don't find anybody just running around the throne room and say it's my father's house there is still order satan is not there yet there is still order hallowed be your name next verse verse 10 6 verse 10 thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven please look up I can spend the whole night even if this were a vigil discussing this one scripture this is Jesus teaching us on prayer let's do a quick recap he says when you pray this should be your understanding that you are praying to the father you will require faith because he's in a realm that is not earthly are we together that you must approach him with the spirit of reverence and then your priority as far as the manifestation is not just your need pray that his kingdom comes you know what his kingdom is the kingdom of god look up please the kingdom of god represents the life the culture of heaven it talks about the sovereign rule of heaven finding expression that you pray that his kingdom would come how by his will being done so his kingdom only comes where his will is being done wow do you know what god's will is i wish above all things the spirit of god speaking through the apostle that he prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered that's the will of god it is not his will that any man perish but that all come into repentance let me tell you this please look up if the will of god is really done in your life you may not have a prayer request again are you seeing what he's teaching you he's saying that even though i will answer your request the reason why you still have prayer requests is because the kingdom has not truly come and his will is not yet done that if the will of god is allowed to be enforced you would not have any request again so more than the prayer requests that seem to multiply by the day pray that his influence through his will find expression in your life if the kingdom comes your life must be a replica of heaven question did you ever see any angel making a request in heaven did you ever see any four and twenty elder making a request in heaven did you ever see any of the living creatures all that happens in heaven is worship do you know why because the kingdom has found expression so if the kingdom comes to your house you will not even need to say god what about this issue of school fees the kingdom of god is not just some cloud the kingdom of god is god's will and god's intent in its entirety finding expression in your life someone say your kingdom come 
Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. It's a prayer. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Imagine what happens to Nigeria if his kingdom comes and his will is done. Imagine what happens in Africa if his kingdom comes and his will is done. Imagine what happens to your political career, to your business. Listen, let me tell you this, when the kingdom of God comes upon your business, don't think you'll be praying in tongues around. You will see heaven in a way that will bring everyone to say, what is this? When the kingdom of God came and met a man inside a den of lions, not even the lions could hurt him. That's kingdom come. When the kingdom of God came upon Samaria through the prophecy of one man, the Bible says in 24 hours, by this time, tomorrow and four lepers were the instruments that were used do not trivialize you know most times when we say the kingdom come we just think evangelism so winning no kingdom come is more than just so winning kingdom come is the reality the the full span of the sphere the intense the culture the desire of the king being superimposed in a life listen to what it says it says matthew chapter 6 please give us verse 10 it says your kingdom come your will be done in earth not on earth in earth and like you've heard me say the first earth is you you are that earthen vessel so let the kingdom come in my life let the kingdom come in my business let the kingdom come in my destiny let the kingdom come in my church when you pray your kingdom come by your will being done it's a very powerful thing look at me brothers and sisters we have subliminally been taught that the will of god is always to our destruction you know most people hate saying thy will be done because they suspect that if you ever give god a chance his will will so frustrate you so when we say your will be done especially for something that we already have our own plans lord i don't know if it's your will to collect this job that cbn is just giving me but your will be done when your mind is saying god if you try it it will play with me i just got a job in cbn i'm saying your will be done so people will hear it but you too you know listen his will is what made heaven heaven if you doubt what his will can do look at heaven heaven is what happens when the will of god is not resisted i repeat heaven is what happens when his will is not resisted thy kingdom come your priority should be his kingdom when his kingdom comes, drugs, violence, arm robbery, corruption, all of these things will fade away. Remember the Bible talks about a new heaven and a new earth. The old one folding like a carpet. That's what happens when his kingdom comes. Let me tell you something. If you're having problem in your workplace, your company, you don't just need good leaders. You don't just need intelligent people. What you may need, truthfully speaking, is his kingdom to come. Kingdom come is not just for the advantage of Christians alone. You are saying heaven and its reality. Let it find expression. There is no recession in heaven. There is no up today and down tomorrow in heaven. A description of heaven is what Proverbs, I think chapter 4 and verse 18, I hope I'm right. He says, but the path of the just is as a shining light it says shining ever brighter more and more there is no better yesterday reject that thing over your life your yesterday should never be better than your tomorrow reject that kind of life that that plateaus and then you start plunging down 
that is the that is a a dangerous heritage that africa tries to propose to us that you rise to a point whether in ministry whether in life and they say it's your time after what fade away i reject it the bible says the path of the just 30 years after now we're still shining listen it is unto you according to what you believe next scripture Matthew chapter 6 we're still walking it am I wasting your time give us this day <laughs> our daily bread someone shout God is a giver, God is a giver. one more time say God is a giver, God is a giver. say my bread is daily, daily. oh Nigerians prophesy say my bread is daily you have shown me your monthly bread you have shown me your quarterly bread as an investor let me see your daily bread because the prayer says the nature of god's giving is that it resets after every 24 hours have you believed that my god is father and father is giver I have prioritized your kingdom give us this day give us this day give this family this day any man that cannot provide for his family the bible says he has denied the faith are we bible students and is worse than an infidel so if it is true that we handed over this home to god where is our bread for today someone you need to take your eyes away from your company from the government I'm not a politician but in Africa and all over the world we blame everything on those in power we blame everything on those members of parliament anything that goes wrong both the one that is our responsibility and the one that is not our responsibility there are things only God can do give us this day ah, like a child will run and say mommy I'm hungry and the mother is proud to be mother follow me she says let's get to the kitchen and let me see. you will see what i've done and there are options what do you want there's this there's that there's that and the child is proud of such a you know this adverts that they show you see this blue band adverts or whatever have you seen that kind of thing and you see the children even though they are acting you look at it and you're just salivating and you you walk you walk to a shop or a mall and you're ready to buy the same thing Do you believe, listen to me, do you believe God is a giver? Yes. Do you believe he can bless you daily? Yes. Now please, I'm not promoting irresponsibility. We are very responsible people. And when we teach, we teach from a balanced perspective. Because if you just teach believers to just wait for God, another way, if you don't balance it, you will produce irresponsible citizens. This is what has made many young people to not be productive. They will not get jobs. They sit down and live in superstitious realities that keep punishing them and their wives and their children. This is not what I'm advocating. I am saying that as a believer, in addition to all you do, there is an advantage by reason of your being grafted into Christ. That it provides you a platform. Aside, you can hold your salary and you can hold God's provision. You will know the difference. Believe me. Let me speak to you in the name of honesty. How many of you know that based on the current African salary scale, if you are to build an enviable destiny, many, many jobs, as far as this country and Africa is concerned, not to insult and demean government or our entrepreneurs, they are doing their best, but by the scale of salary, you will not be able to do much in your lifetime. Please believe it early. You want to do ministry. Many of you here are pastors. My dear co-laborers in the kingdom. You will not be able to do ministry. And if all you are depending on entirely. Respectfully speaking. It's just the givings and what comes from the bowls, offerings. You know that sooner or later. There will be grievous tears 
That's a risk, a big risk. When I approach God, I know that He's a giver. And let me tell you how God gives. <laughs> Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. Please don't forget this for the rest of your life. Give, the Bible says, and it shall be given unto you. Here's how God gives. Ready? Read with me. Good measure, uh huh. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall. Hold on. So the way God gives is that He goes around the earth and He looks for men that He coordinates to your life. That's how God gives. And can I tell you something? Are you aware that the population of men is increasing on earth? That may be bad for the climate, but it's good for your giving. Because that means there are enough actors. If you refuse to give, God can use another person too. Shall men give? He talks to you and you argue. It takes one year. Imagine if God now tells this man and says, give, give Joshua Selman, say a hundred thousand. If it takes you one year to obey God, wouldn't I suffer? God, God gave the instruction in January. You obeyed December. What now happens to me? <laughs> so while you are arguing and disobeying, you will find another human. Please, someone believe that God, there are enough men to be used by God to bless you. Listen. When you know this, you stop becoming angry at individuals. Don't put pressure on your uncle. He's only one of 7.2 billion people that are available to be used. Listen. Save yourself the heart attack of blackmailing people and, allow, and, and making people feel bad for being successful. We do that a lot in Nigeria. Once somebody rises from a family, he's almost, he will keep quiet for many years. Sometimes it's until he's about to die before you know he's that successful. Because everybody comes and you now say, I prayed for you. I mean, if you pray this intercession, it's you and God. God is the one who rewards you. But why put pressure on individuals like that? But if you know that God, see, let me tell you, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you can be here in Abuja or anywhere, whereas your answer will come from Israel. Someone will come and say, I don't know you. Ah. The next time someone tells you something, told me, say, aha, uh -huh, the giver is at work. The giver is at work. Moving men. Kali Parus Kadabata. Moving systems. The giver is at work. believe what I'm telling you the giver is at work someone wants to shut down my company the giver the giver I approach you daily bread daily bread the urgency in this family one month may not meet us alive where is the giver government cannot guarantee giving you daily your boss cannot guarantee giving you daily I bring you good news Abba is sufficient enough to provide for your daily bread. Listen now. Give us this day. When God was going to send me to this city, you know what it means to come to Abuja from Zaria? You are intelligent, think well. If God does not send you, you will not only disgrace yourself, you will be a memorial, you will be a lesson for people, you, you will be a portrait of what disobedience looks like. They will use you in Bible schools to teach people, parents will use you to caution their children, people in politics will use you to warn, to show people how painful it is to disobey God. Hallelujah. But when I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Hear me. I want you to leave tonight's service with a sense of confidence. 
Look at men as if they owe you. Look at them as if you are wondering. You mean he has not spoken to you yet? I, I expect you to be one of the actors. I don't mean talk to them and harass them. Listen. Sit down. Exodus chapter 3 and 21. Let me finish that part so we move quickly. We have a few minutes and we're done. Exodus 3, 21. This is how God gives. Please read it. You're a Christian. Ready? Want to read. And I will give these people. Hold on. Who will give? Who will give? God. And I will give. But this is how I will give. In the sight of the Egyptians. I will give you by placing something on your life called favor. Listen, listen. And the character of that favor is that even if you, it is Egyptians I need to use, when favor is on you, it's like a spell. Even Egyptians that have oppressed you for 430 years. If your favor only works for family members, it's not authentic favor. Please give us that scripture. Exodus 3, 21. It shall come to pass. This is the proof I have given to you. That when you go, hallelujah, you shall not go empty. You shall not go empty. You shall not go empty. I know you lost your wallet, but don't kill yourself. Ah, my life is finished. How much is there? Don't kill yourself like that. The Savior is in your heart. A little box with maybe a few dollars or something just fell and you, you are giving yourself heart attack. Every time you wake up in the morning and you see that there are still men, rejoice. I'm transferring in you a very powerful mentality. It's not a mentality of irresponsibility. It's a superior advantage we have in this kingdom. Man of God, let me tell you this. Don't be writing letters to people and say, till now, God has not spoken to you. Don't harass anybody. They didn't call you. Let me tell you something. From where, hold on please guys. From where you are, if you dare wake up in the morning and hear the sound of cars moving and see people moving, rejoice. There are enough men. The giver. He can play men like chess from heaven. You move forward. Move forward. Go to him. They don't have to know you. Strangers shall feed your flock. Is it not in your Bible? These are my convictions. Believe me. We are not just shouting for nothing. If you don't believe what I'm teaching you, sooner or later life will so whip you. Because you will see how limited your platforms are. Man is how God gives. He uses man. 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 So he can sit down and speak to you and say, this family, I'm instructing you that they never beg for bread again. Listen. And you come to that family and say, God sent me here. How many of you are working in this family? Well, only two of us. How many of you are graduates? All of us. Why is that so? Anyway, God has instructed me to come. It is God that gives, but he uses men. Take away superstition around giving. Giving comes through men. What God gives you is he gives you the capital that buys money. It's called true riches. In one of our sessions on finances, I hope God will grant us grace to deal with it. If all you have is money, you are in trouble. Because there is a realm you get to where everybody around you is rich. What then do you have? Money itself is a product. There is what buys it. The same way money can buy a bottle of drink. 
there is something that also buy, buys money the name of the capital that buys money is called two riches you are only wealthy when you have two riches someone can dash you money and it will finish but not when you have two riches one of them there are seven of them that god gives men but only one of them i'll share with us tonight is called favor favor is two riches it is the capital that buys money maybe i should add one more should i add one more the second of the two riches is called relationships everything money can buy relationships can pay for too in the multitude of men the bible says is a king's honor if all you have is just access to financial resources without men you will not do much not everything opens to finances there are things that only open to the ministry of men the lord gave the word and great was the company of them that published it are we blessed next verse matthew 6 media help us matthew chapter 6 again now i believe verse 11 this is a very serious one preparing to round up and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors now please let me have your attention jesus gets to a very sensitive part of his prayer he's talking of forgiveness please keep the scripture there for a while forgive us our wrongs or our debts he didn't stop there he says as we forgive those who sin against us some versions who say there are many revelations about this sensitive aspect of prayer and if we do not learn this we may not be able to excel in our prayer lives a few thoughts on this please follow me number one all men are human they fail and they grow weary this is the revelation jesus is giving forgive us our debts as we also are debtors to others he's planting in his disciples a revelation that you are in the world of men that the best of all men are still men husband wife business partners all kinds of people somewhere in your journey in life you will have to find an occasion where you will need to communicate forgiveness are we together forgive us our debts he would have stopped there but he says there's something i need to let you know as we ourselves forgive our debtors it's a chain reaction this is the one area where everybody is involved both the one praying those listening he's saying forgive us our debts that means as you live in this world this is not just a prayer issue now it's a revelation live with the consciousness that all men are human let the propensity for forgiveness be ever there in your heart ready to communicate it because you will find many men and the higher you rise the more there will be need to communicate this listen living a life without forgiveness will be a life of sorrow eventually you will find out that you'll be the only one standing the chances that everybody around your life will offend you one day is hundred percent the chances that you will offend everybody around your life is hundred percent regardless your spiritual growth you read about jesus who carried a whip is it in your bible that one day jesus entered the temple he didn't report the rebellious people to the roman government as a nice coordinated citizen would do he carried the whip and took laws in his hands whip all the people turned the table of the exchangers and was preaching hard and said my house should be called the house of prayer if you were in government ladies and gentlemen and a report reaches you that jesus just just did something like this what would you do now jesus i love you but why have you tied my hand now that's what happened to king Nebuchadnezzar when they gave a decree they said no prayer should happen to any god for a period of 30 days daniel went to pray 
he didn't do wrong but he offended the laws of the land offending people has nothing to do with being evil it's a difference in perspective difference in values you may have an maybe a muslim driver and one day you quickly want to pick something in the bank and you come out and you see the person praying and he acts as if you didn't employ him he doesn't even pay attention to you until he's done with his prayer and you while he's praying you are just thinking and wondering how do i punish this man do i drive him do i jail him and yet he's, he's a very sincere man a man only honoring his conviction forgive us our sins forgiveness is painful that's why jesus took our time to talk forgiveness is an aspect of giving i hope you know don't give money alone forgiveness is giving you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today you reign in heaven and now exalted i really want to worship you my god you have won my heart and i am yours forever and ever i will love you you are the only one who died for me save your life to set me free so i lift my voice to you listen forgiveness is a profound proof of spiritual maturity you're a businessman you will need it you are a leader you will need it you are a father you will need it how many hired servants the prodigal son said does my father have and i am here sitting with the swine i may not know many things about my father i've been with the swine a long time but there is something i know about him that he is rich in mercy therefore i will arise and i will go to my father and I will say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your slaves. As soon as the father saw him afar off, the Bible says the father came and embraced him. You are messed up, but you are still my son. Listen to me. Sooner or later in your life, if it's not already happening to you right now, you are going to get to a point in your life where you will need to communicate forgiveness. Cheated in business. Backstabbed politically. Betrayed in ministry. Taken advantage of. This is the world of men Jesus is teaching us. If I ask everybody to come, in, to come and pick this mic, and tell us the story behind your resentment for men some of you concluded that all men are wicked and evil and devilish i don't need any man no take it easy god still uses men some of you is preachers you hate when you see any man on stage you curse him before you even know him that's how they stole our money that year exactly and the man can preach just like him that's that's exactly <laughs> listen to me my brothers and my sisters hear me i bring you the word of the lord it is important for you maintain don't just receive forgiveness jesus was teaching here he said i am willing the father is willing to communicate forgiveness but you must have this revelation forever for as long as you are alive can i even tell you something your forgiveness will need to graduate into forbearance 
let me tell you the difference between forgiveness and forbearance forgiveness happens because of the limitations of men mistakes limitations ignorance foolishness forbearance means that that weakness still remains in the person and you will have to live with it forever that means it will be repeated again this should be taught have you prayed for your son and you call him and say why are you living like this why are you a bad boy and he says daddy i will never do it again by evening police is calling you e evening not the next day don't feel bad please if you have someone that's why they are here we'll pray for them six o'clock are you the owner of this child yes sir please come to the we are tired if this boy if he comes here they will jail him and you are standing here say i thought this guy just begged at that point you don't need forgiveness again you need forbearance he's a prodigal son but he's still my son something happened and i'm only going to say it because archbishop benson either hosa is gone and then you know years ago this was from duncan williams himself he he said how that i think it was oral robert i don't know who came to ghana and had a meeting and while they were reporting the meeting they made mistakes and they credited some of the churches that belong to Bishop Duncan Williams to Ora Roberts. And when he heard it, he said, no. He just tried to correct them sharply. And then when the report got to Ora Roberts, he said, no, no, no. Why should this guy be doing this? And then he called on Archbishop Benz in Isahosa and said, why is your son behaving like this? I mean, you taught this guy well. He should behave well. And then Bishop Benz in Isahosa called him as his son to rebuke him. And he said, I would not come. Duncan Williams, in his own words, leave me alone, I will not come. You are not God. And he said, all right, from today, you're on your own. It didn't take two years. Everything was pursuing him, from government to demons, to principalities, nature, men, everything. I mean it. He got to a point where he prayed he fasted no matter what you do if it's in disobedience you will have to go back to the protocol of god's ordinance you're not going to quietly manipulate god in the secret place when you are living largely no it doesn't work that way the prodigal son can ask for forgiveness while he's with the swine but for restoration he must still meet his father listen carefully and then he now called and it was difficult to now reach Benson Hidahosa. His life had been so shattered. He was a shadow of himself. And then he heard that Archbishop Benson Hidahosa was in London and he booked a flight quickly. When he got there, he lay down flat on the ground and held his legs and said, no matter what happens, you are still my father. And he said, look what has happened to my life. And he said, Bishop Benson Hidahosa just looked at him and after a while took him a deep breath and here's all he said satan this is the business between me and my son <laughs> the legal access you have it is me he has offended leave two of us together you can now go You will need to obtain forgiveness many times in your lifetime. You will need to give forgiveness. Listen to me. There are people here who it's as though you would rather die than to forgive your wife or your husband or your children. No. This child wasted my school fees. I, I wasted money paying school fees. I didn't eat well. I paid school fees and look the kind of result he brought. Let me tell you this. One of the most powerful words for me in the Bible is the word again. Again is a powerful word. It's the clearest description of hope. And Adam knew his wife again. The prodigal son again. The Lord is speaking to you here. You're under the sound of my voice. 
piling up a list of people for as long as you pin people down you too you will remain down you cannot rise when you are pinning others down apostle you don't know what they did to me apostle forgive us our trespasses there are pastors today who hate others talk about others tear down others I, I don't care whether you are right or wrong it says forgive us as we forgive when it has to do with offense he's saying everybody's in the same basket it's often said that if you point one finger at someone is it two or three now i don't know how many a number of your fingers are pointing back at you that is so true in fact ethically some of you here are hr specialists your consultants and i think there is a conflict management principle that hr people teach that if you want to report someone who is a staff in a company before you say one thing that is wrong against that person you must say three things you like that means if you are coming to meet the hr or the boss before you say this person you are bad or he's a thief if you cannot tell your boss three things about the person that is positive he will send you away he will say complain the day you show me three other things that are good about the person and they found out that it has improved the working relationship of many people within the company because by the time you're researching and finding the things that are good you will just see how minute that issue is and you say i forgive you use it for your company from tomorrow call them and tell them i learned something all of you come together no more complain on this ratio three to one we're seen about much more grace about so use that as a scriptural backing <laughs> maintain an allowance for the humanity of men as you live in this world take away the godlike expectation that you have over men leave home I remember one time someone called me I, I i got up i think around maybe two or three i don't do much of sleep in the night and i saw a text that was full of all kinds of things you claim you're a man of god i've been calling you i was so tired i was sleeping you know? this person insulted me and said this i'm calling you to pray if my loved one dies just know you killed my loved one what is this now i only slept they say you pray in the night yes it's true but that day i was tired should i lie i only i slept listen it's good to expect so much but you must have realistic know the difference between realistic and unrealistic expectations are we together there are people today who get angry at politicians i gave you 50 names to give all of them a job you only gave five what kind of person are you he says i've tried my best you are not the only one didn't i vote for you your vote is only one be patient <laughs> what of business people you must have a large heart please listen to me the humanity of men is something you must factor in your heart otherwise you will have heart attack every day of your life every day every day I'm wrapping up let me give you a story when i started ministry i was so passionate about being in the good books of everybody i'm a peace loving person i don't like trouble as you see me like this if it takes me sleeping on the ground here for peace to reign i would do it peacefully and quietly people took advantage of me people will sleep they will wake up stretch themselves and now try to call me if i'm not available they'll say you said god god told you god sent you to us I would feel so blackmailed I was almost I was drained let me tell you how God delivered me I entered a Catholic Church and I looked at the crucifix you know the, the cross that they put there and the Holy Spirit said whose face is there this is true for the first time I realized I was not the one who died for the sins of people <laughs> honestly honestly 
it just occurred to me that you can never truly satisfy everybody's needs the goal is to be sincere and to do your best with the grace that god has given you because the time it takes to appease another is the same time that allows to offend another can you come to my house okay i'm coming ah you went to this house what of my own okay don't worry i will see what i can do i would i would receive over five invitations for the same date and they will forget to contact me and then remind me sometimes the morning of that meeting i hope you are still coming our posters are out and i'm saying god what am i doing now and for some of them the journey there's no airport there and then we're just starting the resources to have the luxury to travel is not even there can you forgive i went to preach somewhere when i started out in ministry it was raining i went through the rain do you know when i got to the church they didn't keep a seat for me i was a preacher <laughs> yes sir they were acting drama laughing around jumping and playing i fasted i prepared a very serious sermon i came to pray for people with all my heart and here's what these people are doing i stood at the door they put umbrella and then eventually they had to push some people please move move that's how they got the seat for me and then they acted drama for over one hour plus they were laughing i said what is going on here why did i accept this invitation i'm not saying drama is wrong and then when i got up i had not even raised one song of worship they just brought a paper and passed a sorry time has gone and you know security uh can i just maybe 15 minutes or so i said oh, no no come on what is this in the end of it i still was happy i said lord i'm not going to allow offense or bitterness destroy and corrupt someone came here hungry to receive let me tell you this one of the secrets of the anointing it's not prayer and fasting it's love and compassion it's not enough to just want power you must have a high level of forbearance some of the nastiest people in your life may be some of the most sincere people too they are just people who do not know how to manage the emotions around their lives you must obtain grace to forgive there are some of you who need to forgive maybe your house helps you are already planning that this week you, you are going to jail them take it easy take it easy give them a chance again when i learned this in ministry it gave me peace there is absolutely nothing that surprises me today in ministry now my heart is prepared for anything anything As I'm here, if I hear that the security people in my house have run away with my car, I'll say, okay, no problem. That's all right. God, thank you. It's your own police. I hand over the case to you. If you find the car, good. If you don't find it, that's all right. Please, I need peace in my life. Make up your mind that you are going to have peace. Let me tell you this. Do you know the highest index for measuring wealth is peace? Not progress. Peace. There are many people today the names of people is what makes your blood pressure to be running up and down you want to sleep you just remember oh this senator oh this person oh this business person can you imagine how this person betrayed me five billion gone like that it's gone but be patient god can restore but it's when you sleep and wake up he restores if you die they bury you make up your mind great peace have them that trust or love the lord he said in nothing listen make up your mind that you will have peace in your life nobody will see your peace is an asset don't trade it are we together peace i was told of someone who died from april fool true story this thing they do during april you know you just come and lies and and they said something serious and he died of a heart attack the person who was joking did not know what to do now yeah. 
forgive as you are forgiven our time is up let me touch on one aspect just give me five minutes and we're done next it says lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil now this is a very powerful scripture lead us not into temptation that means men don't just get tempted they are led this is a very powerful information temptation does not just come to meet you there is someone or something that leads you and he said lord your leadership does not lead men into temptation lead us please keep the scripture there lead us not into temptation it's the day that armed robbers will come somewhere a voice will say go and rest there you are being led you just go and sit down there and get into trouble there are many people who were innocent but because they could not discern they went and fell into trouble you must pray for guidance not everything that looks good is good not every door that is opened is anointed in fact almost all troubles first appear as good lead us not into temptation is a very powerful prayer the guidance the leadership of the holy spirit isaiah chapter 30 you read from verse 21 and 23 please let's hurry up isaiah 30 21 and 23 the bible says isaiah 20 it says isaiah 20 isaiah 30 sorry 30 from verse 21 to 23 please write it down for reference isaiah 30 it says and thine ear shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left 22 the bible says oh dear let's just keep 21 go back to 21 I think I should just leave it there. Your ears shall hear a word from behind thee saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When you turn to the right and when you turn to the left. In this world that we live in, you need divine direction. To be guided to go away from the place of temptation. There are people who had no business getting into certain kinds of troubles, but they were led there. There are some of our children who had no business joining certain groups, but they were led there. They just got into the midst of people and they said, okay, we are this fraternity, we are this occult groups. There are many people today, the destruction in your life started when you were led to join certain clubs, certain groups. The prayer to lead us not into temptation is a very powerful prayer. Lord, anything that has trouble in the end, save me from getting there lead us that means your will plays a role temptation does not come until there is something in you that resonates with that temptation are we together satan does not tempt you around anything in your life that does not truly desire if you are broke the temptation will be packaged around finances chances are that you will respond to it because you are hungry remember jesus the temptation the first temptation had to do with hunger you are hungry why don't you turn this stone to bread listen don't just pray for your needs alone pray that god will give you the stamina not to fall into temptations that come around your need you may be needing a house in abuja desperately your family members are stranded and satan comes why don't you compromise and you will get one million overnight for a house it's easy to resist temptation when you don't have a need satan is not foolish he will wait till you have a need and the need presses you to the neck then he comes with an offer it's difficult to say no when you have a need lead us not into temptation and then he says deliver us from evil now this one evil you don't have to go there Evil is a, is a living spirit. It moves around looking for men. You know, a man of God, a man of God gave a story very, very 
touching story about a man who tried to board a flight and he was rushing there and for whatever reason you know it was close before he got there the flight lifted a few minutes later he would hear from the news maybe an hour later or so that the flight crashed he was saying wow then he went to join a train and the train crashed that one and he died in the train you see that one death was looking for him death was intentional if you if you miss the air i'm still waiting for you on land let me tell you this two scriptures please very quickly two scriptures first john 5 19 first john 5 19 never forget this scripture first john 5 19 the bible says we know that we are of god and the whole world not abuja not nigeria not africa the whole world lieth in wickedness every one of us here is a potential victim of wickedness if unassisted by god everyone you don't have to offend anyone just be alive even the dead body of moses when moses died was he free satan still came to carry remember he wanted the dead body when jesus died was he free they still put people to cover the body what do you do with a dead body they covered it in a tomb and they still put people to protect the body last scripture for tonight second peter chapter 2 and verse 9 second peter chapter 2 and verse 9 i say amen to this before we even read it the lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished the key word or the key phrase is the lord knoweth how to <laughs> god knows a woman knows how to make jollof rice god knows how to deliver you and knows how to push the enemy to the place where he knows that there is a god in heaven god is a deliverer deliver us from evil is a prayer you need to pray sincerely deliver my family from evil deliver my ministry from evil deliver my business from evil this is jesus teaching us how to pray that this must be the construction of our approach to prayer these are the details that must be captured in prayer that prevails please listen to me believers we are wrapping up the lord is teaching us this because he wants our prayer life to be rich that when next you go to pray whether you are praying in the spirit whether you are praying in understanding you must approach it with this body of thought, with this mindset. I am coming to my Father. I have the faith to approach Him. I approach Him with the spirit of reverence. My priority is that the kingdom come. I know He's a giver. He gives me daily by supplying favor and using the ministry of men. So every time you are praying, God open a door. You are not just playing a blind prayer. Father, doors must be open. Doors, no, you know how the doors are open. You are no longer in confusion. If I ask you now, how do doors open? You shouldn't be confused. It is through men. So when I'm saying, Lord, open doors, invariably I'm saying, send destiny help us. I'm no longer praying a careless prayer. I'm not shadow boxing. I know. Send me divine connectors. Send me men of influence. Send me gifted people. Send me burden bearers. If God wants to lift me, how does he lift me? He uses men. So give me the wisdom to maintain strategic relationships, oh God. Now your prayer life is fruitful. Just pray randomly. God, don't leave me like this. Change my story. Wipe my tears. It may be a sincere prayer. But I'm telling you, you will not be able to maximize that prayer because intelligence is not captured in that prayer. Now if God comes and speaks prophetically in the name of Jesus, by this week, 
you are returning with a testimony while you are saying amen you are not just saying a blind amen there are revelations that support your receiving what are the revelations favor is upon my life that favor will make men to come to me that favor will orchestrate events that is the basis of your saying amen the devil will not plant doubt now you know why you are saying amen now you give the holy spirit room to be able to walk that word are we together every closed door be open now you are saying amen you know why you are saying amen because there is the power of the holy spirit that can swing open doors in the spirit are you ready to pray you're not going to stand please sit we'll pray for just one minute and then i do the altar call and we're done please whilst you're praying you are seated i'd like you to lift your voice in one minute and say father change my perspective as far as the ministry of prayer is concerned i am a king and i am a priest i want to begin to pray the kind of prayer that produces results please lift your voice and pray you came to church outside are you praying Lekete brandas koto braski le hesheli ata brandazi da basuda. The mystery of prevailing prayer. Lord, I desire my prayer life to be full, to be rich. I approach you as Abba, my source. No fear, sustainer, defender. I come to you by faith full of reverence i come to you asking that your kingdom find expression in my life let your will be done in my home my ministry my office you are a giver send me my daily bread i have shortchanged myself i have lived for 30 years 40 years 60 years 70 years 80 years I didn't know you give daily I thought you only give once per year now I release my faith all oh, giver of all good things what do you have in store for me today what do you have in store for my family today give me my daily bread forgive me my trespasses I obtain grace to forgive those who trespass against me. I live with the awareness that this is the world of men. Lead me not into temptation, O God. Deliver me from evil. We are wrapping up. then the prayer he taught ends with this for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever keep praying amen for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever request that we all rise let's minimize movement everywhere all the overflows outside
following online, please stand. Please stand. Please stand. I want to make the altar call. It never tires me to give people an opportunity to run to Jesus. The church is like a hospital. The hospital has several departments and several compartments. There is a place called the intensive care unit where you treat patients whose situation is a matter of life and death. Please look up. No matter what it is that you have and you know, if Jesus is not Lord of your life, you are truly not saved. He says, what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and to lose his soul? Week in, week out, we have thousands of people streaming in, coming here, following online from all across the continent. It's our assignment to give people room to truly come and make bold declarations for Jesus. You are here under the sound of my voice in this main auditorium and then outside. You're saying, Apostle, I love Jesus, but I'm yet to make a genuine decision. For some of you, you probably have made the decision and your life just went haywire. And you're saying, I need Jesus right now. We have just two minutes for you. Wherever you are, whilst we clap and encourage you, please very quickly run from your seat and I want you to come and stand here. Run and come and stand here. Run like there's fire on the mountain. Come like you truly mean business with Jesus. Don't be ashamed. Don't say we came in group. Uh -uh. This is a personal affair. Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? Celebrate them as they come. Scripture says he must be born again. He must be born again. Keep coming. Win that war tonight. Jesus is giving you an opportunity to make it right. Is this all? I still believe there are a few more people. All those in the overflows, just move to your projector stand. All the overflows, right down to the basement and then outside. Move to your projector stand. And you who are following from your home, your office, your device, wherever, I want you to connect. I'm about to lead them in this prayer. Make sure you participate in the prayer. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for being bold. Thank you for not being ashamed of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're joining them, please quickly come. Quickly come. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for the boldness. It takes a lot of boldness to come and stand before Jesus and before his people. But can I tell you this? This is the noblest and the wisest decision any man can make in his lifetime. The decision to hand over everything to Jesus in exchange for his life. The Bible says as many as will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. It doesn't matter how you have been, how you have lived, what went right or wrong. He's able to give you a new beginning. Lift your right hand and pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. Jesus is here. Say after me very loud. Say it very clear. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. And I believe that you are the Son of God. Tonight, I make you my Lord, my Savior, my King. I obtain forgiveness of sin. I receive your life. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign from tonight and forever I am a child of God amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for this once it's always an honor to present to you precious souls men and women who Jesus died for Lord I pray according to the authority of Scripture I declare their sins forgiven I declare that you give them a new beginning even by your spirit the power of Satan the power of sin the grave is broken over your life from today I declare that you are commended to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit the Lord himself will build you to be mighty in the spirit you go from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen God bless you now very quickly thank you I like you to please follow this gentleman waving the placard up and they'll just have a word with you and you'll be back to your seat please celebrate them very quickly celebrate them very quickly hallelujah
thank you for your patience just give me two minutes we stretched a bit now um i really apologize i i honor everyone this is a house of honor we make it a culture to not trivialize people i know that there are so many people noble people who come from all over this city and around this nation and as much as god grants us grace we do well to recognize um, a few people and honor them but please let me apologize in advance if for any reason you're not recognized and you're not accorded honor openly and publicly it doesn't mean that we do not recognize you one of our pillars in this ministry is honor and so um, i'm saying that so that i cannot promise that every week we would just um, indefinitely recognize people and honor them we'll do our best to make sure that as much as we have the details we communicate that honor but it should in case we're unable to do that please uh, forgive let me just honor four or five people very quickly and then we'll share the grace and we'll be on our way praise the lord i want to as always honor um honorable dr john abraham and his wife thank you thank you thank you ma'am. this time around you're with your wife and then i'm told um he came with a pastor missionary um pastor dr Romana, did I get that right? A missionary from Poland. Blessings, blessings to you, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. And then, um, honorable, blessed honor, the SA to the Benway State Governor. Blessings to you. Thank you. He was here last week also on religious matters, and he came with his entourage also. The Lord bless you. And then, honorable, forgive me. Is it Orugu? If I didn't get that right, please forgive me. Also, the SA to the Governor of Benway State on Youth and Student Affairs. Are you here, sir? The Lord bless you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you so, so much. And then um, we have Mrs. Hawa Philip Aduda, the wife of Senator Philip Aduda, representing the FCT. Thank you. The Lord bless you. Truly honor you, Ma. Really appreciate you. Every other dignitary, every other noble personality, we truly honor you and i'm sure that the protocol will just direct you so we have a word briefly after service the lord honor you the lord increase everyone thank you for coming now a very important announcement for the first time in abuja next week sunday will be our first miracle service <laughs> hallelujah please listen listen please do not miss it for anything come early now just two instructions i want you to come with your request write everything that has troubled you everything that will not let you go there is a god that answers by fire we are going to collate all of the requests even for your loved ones who are unable to make it please bring it we are going to be praying at the altar here if you have points of contact documents that you want the lord to visit you with please do well to come with them and then for all our international guests please do well to reach our pr lines so that they can help arrange your coming especially with the whole pro, uh, covid formalities and, and so on and so forth and to let you know that we have a very able a very capable medical team that can attend to your medical needs should in case you need anything around um, you need medical attention in as much as we have several doctors and consultants here we have a dedicated medical team of professionals to attend to you by god's grace pastor nathaniel bassi will be with us next week sunday here so it's going to be a wonderful time in the name of jesus christ time is 5 p.m on the dot we start so that we can finish on time i will be blessed tonight the lord bless you in the name of jesus i decree and declare that he will cause his face to shine upon you in the name of jesus the lord lift up his countenance upon you and may he give you peace I pray for you and yours this week beginning you are blessed in Jesus name you carry the favor of God in the name of Jesus you go from glory to glory from grace to grace from power to power everything that does not honor Jesus you stand upon it this week in the name of Jesus Christ you return by next week as signs and wonders in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ after the grace do well to greet one or two people before you leave and please 
um, because of the security situation, I want you to cooperate with the protocol and the security team. Then again, let me plead respectfully, please do not waylay any of our dignitaries who are people of honor. Let's do well to not embarrass them. Praise the Lord. Everyone is honored. Everyone is celebrated. But please, let's cooperate with the protocol and the security team inside and outside. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you and see you next week Sunday. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.